Africa is the hope of Christianity. We must build proper Christianity. Because of there's too much need and poverty. Our ministry is now becoming need-based. Whilst we minister to people's needs, they must know doctrine. They must know what is right. They must know who God is. They must know why we believe in the Trinity. They must know why we believe in Jesus. They must know the foundations of their faith. It can't always be about receive, 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 receive. We must also teach in addition to receiving, to receive knowledge, to receive doctrine, to receive sound doctrine. Because let me tell you, in Africa, we preach heresy freely and boldly. African preachers, they, they preach because whilst he's preaching, he's manufacturing heresy. He's manufacturing and, and, and the people are eating it because they don't know anything. Hello, this is Kingdom Matters with Pastor Gideon. If you are interested in the word of God, you are in the right place. Now, Pastor Mensa Otabe has addressed African general overseers and African pastors on how we can take the church to the next level. And now, this was done just a day ago at the Desert Pastures with Reverend Eastwood Anaba. And boy, I can't have enough. I'm in an ecstatic mood. He touched on many of the things that we have been passionate about and I wish every pastor in Africa gets to see this video and then gets to learn from it now one of the reasons why i'm excited about this is because this is a respected man of god in africa and nobody is going to say he's um he's rebuking elders and nobody is going to say he has not achieved anything nobody is going to say he's too young to talk to the elders and nobody is going to say that he must keep quiet and so let's delve into the video let's see what he has got for us i still have my notes with me and I'm ready to write the things that he's going to share with us. Sometimes they call him the Chancellor of the University, Central University. And then they call him the Senior Pastor of the Christ Temple. And then they call him the Founder and General Overseer of ICGC. I call him my friend. Help me welcome Dr. Mensa Uta. For most people who are Pentecostals, and I am a Pentecostal, uh, and I'm a charismatic too, most people who are Pentecostals have a short-term view of Christianity. Most people think Christianity started maybe with kenneth hagin uh something is started with uh maybe azusa street uh, as far as they go but christianity was there before all of these movements uh that came around so when we are thinking about god and the church because i'm talking about the purposeful church that's why i'm saying all of this the church is not fountain gate the church is not icgc the church is not even methodist church which is just about 200, almost 200 years old. The church is not uh, the Lutheran church. The church is not the Roman Catholic church. The church goes way beyond all of that. I'll say it again. Maybe you didn't hear the first time. Pastors, the church is not yours. Men so the church is not yours. And the people are not yours. The one who calls you, calls them. So if Jesus is the one building the church, isn't it reasonable that we know a lot about Jesus? I mean, it's commonsensical. It is his church. This is the owner. So we have to know about the owner. Who is he? Where did he come from? Where is he going? What does he like? What does he not like? What has he said? What has he not said? What I am saying 
Is it in line with what he said? Africa is the center of Christianity now. We must cleanse the African church and ensure that the African church can be a good custodian of the mysteries of Christ for the next generation. It is his church. You are members of his body. He is the head of the body. And in the body of Christ, it's not as if the, there's a body of Christ and the pastors are under the head somewhere. And then after which comes the members going down, down, down. No. We are all members. That's what the scripture says. Of course, he gives some special gifts and special callings and special abilities to do special things. But it doesn't make them owners of the body. It is his church. So, what should be the characteristic of the church? And I will be closing pretty soon. I'll go to the epistles. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12 and 13. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit we were baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. Colossians chapter 3 verse 9 to 11. And do not lie one to another, since you have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all in all. In the church that Jesus said he is building, every barrier is removed. Every barrier. And the first barrier that is removed is that there is neither male nor female. It doesn't mean that there are no women and there are no men. It simply means that one is not superior to the other. Now, if you were a Jew, that would shock you. Because there had to be a demarcation between male and female. Men sit here, women sit there, men do this, women do that, and men cannot do, women cannot do that, and so on and so forth. But he says, in his church, there is neither male nor female. Of course they are, but one is not superior to the other. Second, there is no race, neither Greek nor Jew. There is no special race that is more blessed than the other it doesn't mean that we lose our races when we become christians i'm still a black man but i'm not superior to any other person a white man is white but he's not superior in the church of jesus christ there is no racial superiority and there's no tribal superiority because Israel divided people based on who is circumcised, who is not circumcised. But in Christ, circumcision matters not. That's what he's saying. He's saying that in Christ, there is neither barbarian nor Scythian. Cultural differences are removed. And there is no social class, neither slave nor free. Now, you see, when we read these things today, they are, very, they are easy because that's how our society has been formatted. So, when somebody comes and says there is neither male nor female, it, it doesn't mean anything to you. There is neither bond nor free. It doesn't mean anything to you. There is neither uh, Greek nor Jew. That, it, if you lived in the time of the early New Testament, these are radical statements. In fact, this is one of the reasons why Christianity grew in the first century. Because they removed the barriers. Whereas the Roman society had barriers, Greeks had barriers, Jews had barriers, everybody had barriers. Christianity comes and says, remove the barriers. Everybody, let's come together. We belong to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
That's why Christians could be friends with people who are not their race. Masters could sit in church with their servants and still serve Christ. In their society, it never happened. If you have a higher status, you don't lower yourself. And if you have a lower status, you don't lift yourself. Everybody stays at his level. That is why when I see these kinds of things coming in to the church, I get worried. Especially when we create a class distinction between those on the pulpit and those in the pew. Because that is not the church of Jesus Christ. The fact that I'm standing on the pulpit and I'm the preacher does not make me superior to the member of the church. Christianity is not about barriers. That is Israel. But Jesus says, I will build mine. And if you manage to function the way I want you to function, then nothing can stop you. You know why the early Christians persecuted were able to take over the Roman government not with force of arms not even with argument not with signs and miracles no they did it with lifestyle they did it with lifestyle the Christians were the only ones who knew how to take care of sick people because in those, in those days when infectious diseases came nobody, people thought the gods have cursed them or whatever so if you had uh, a disease like a leprosy or cholera or something, everybody will leave you they will leave, actually people will bring you from the house leave you in the street to die the Christian says no this is what Christ called us to do they go to pick people from the streets with sickness, with disease and take them to places and nurture them and pretty soon everybody says these people we've been persecuting they are a special group of people those sick people came to church that is why Christianity is the foundation of hospitals caring for the sick is Christian of course Christianity has had its problems and has had its its challenges and it always happens when we start erecting barriers I am anointed you are not I have a special grace you don't have it we may be age mates, but we are not grace mates. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> we are not grace mates. What, how were you saved? How were you saved? By grace. How was I saved? We are grace mates. You know why the African church likes barriers? Because the African society likes barriers. We live in a hierarchical society where power must always be concentrated at the top and hammer down everybody. So we become Christians. And although Christ is building something else, we allow our culture to undermine what Christ is building. And if we don't build the church the way Christ wants it to be built, then we will be like Israel, with great promise, yet going into captivity. Africa is the hope of Christianity in the world. If you study the, the story of Christianity, at every point, there is one point, there is one place that preserves everything. At every point. Even Jesus, when he was a baby, at one point he had to go to Egypt and come back. At every point, God would, would develop a place of refuge for his church. And at this point, our continent is the place of refuge for Christianity. You can preach Christ everywhere in Ghana and you will not be arrested. You can preach on the bus, 
on the trotro by the roadside preach everywhere and you are fine you go to some countries now you can't do that Africa is the hope of Christianity we must build proper Christianity because of there's too much need and poverty our ministry is now becoming need based whilst we minister to people's needs they must know doctrine they must know what is right they must know who God is they must know why we believe in the Trinity they must know why we believe in Jesus they must know the foundations of their faith it can't always be about receive 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 we must also teach in addition to receiving to receive knowledge to receive doctrine to receive sound doctrine because let me tell you in Africa we preach heresy freely and boldly African preachers they, they preach because whilst he's preaching he's manufacturing heresy he's manufacturing and, and, and the people are eating it because they don't know anything it may save us it may prosper us it may make us popular but it is taking us into captivity it's taking us right into captivity like Israel and if Christianity dies in Africa that's it if it dies in Africa and Christianity will not die in Africa because people resisted us but because we polluted it so much that it was no longer Christianity it's in the church we preach it but it's not Christianity there's no historical faith there there's no doctrine there it is all theater and gymnastics and all of that going on we can fill large auditoriums but it will not be Christianity that is Africa's challenge pollution of the faith doctrinal pollution yes we must minister to people's needs yes people must experience the power of God what can we do but do that but in the midst of that included with that it's soundness of doctrine and that's what I want to challenge every pastor here it's not your church it's not your people it's not just about teaching your people to love you and, and, and support you and stand with you that's, 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 that's given but more than everything it's about teaching your people to love Jesus to love his word to know what his life is all about to know what his mission is all about that we'll build a Christ centered African church that is the Christianity we can take back to Europe to re-christianize them because I believe they need re-christianization but we cannot re-christianize them by teaching them prosperity because they are already prosperous we can only Christianize them by bringing them back to the Christ of their fathers who build a noble society with them and I trust that that will be your heart desire as a pastor as a church leader as a church member wherever you are whatever you serve that that will be our heart cry it will be my heart cry it will be a, it will be we breathe Christ we breathe Jesus we think Jesus, we talk Jesus, we breathe Jesus, we preach Jesus. Let him feature in your sermons. You cannot preach a whole message and Christ was never a reference point. Let him be your reference point. Teach his wisdom, teach his ways, teach his life, teach his humility, teach the way he, he loves people. And when we build or we are part of what he's building he has guaranteed us one thing 
even death itself cannot stop us. Death cannot stop us. Look at the early Christians. Death couldn't stop them. They were beheaded. They were cut asunder. They were skinned alive. Some of them were, were tarred and lit on fire in palaces. They were thrown to lions. People were slaughtered in front of their wife and children. You would think that any people who face such horrendous persecution would dissipate. But the gates of Hades did not stop the church of Jesus Christ. And I pray that will be our story today. I just want us to spend a little time just to pray and to talk to God. Wow, what a message. Now, I'm going to say what I got from this video. I also want to know what you got from this video. Let me know what you got in the comment section. The one that struck me was not putting much attention on the soundness of doctrine. He says, for the African preacher, the more he preaches, the more he manufactures heresies. And this is very striking. This is very, very, very true. See, with the work of listening to messages, I can tell you, many ministers of the gospel in Africa do not pay attention to what they say. In fact, with some, every line is a heresy. Every line has an error attached to it. I believe we should set up and learn so that we can send the true gospel to the world. This is the time for us to focus on Christ and his purpose that we should reach out to the world and bring them into the fold with an eternity mindset, with a focus to get the world to come into the kingdom. God bless you. I love you. I'm waiting for what you think in the comment section and I'll see you in the next one. Shalom.